Welcome to Sky Channel's International Motorsports programme. This evening we'll be bringing you part two of our report on the final rounds of the 1984 Marlboro Formula 3 series. If you remember, last week Ross Cheever, the young American driver, scored his first ever Formula 3 victory here at the spa Francorchamps circuit. The championship series still, of course, led by Johnny Dumfries, although Russell Spence and Ross Cheever would seem to be giving him the stiffest opposition he's had all season so far. After our report on this second part of the Marlboro Formula 3 championship series, we'll be going back to the 1984 RAC rally to see four stages from the inside of Roger Clark's number 31 Rothmans Porsche during the course of the event itself, and some pretty exciting pictures too. But back to the Marlboro Formula 3 Championship Series. Dumfries still leads it with 87 points. Second is Russell Spence on 52. And in third place, Alan Berg on 49. The Zandvoort circuit will see round 14 of the Marlboro Formula 3 Championship Series. 20 laps around the fast Dutch circuit on the 16th of September. In pole position will be Dave Scott from Great Britain, an absolutely mammoth crowd coming up to watch the Marlboro Formula 3 Championship. Russell Spence alongside him, then comes Ross Cheever, Alan Berg is behind, they get away, and Berg chopping across and colliding with Keith Vine, who's come together with Paul Jackson, who's just about got over the top of Alan Berg. A big accident there. And that could have been a very dangerous accident indeed. They're out of Tarzan Corner in towards the Hugenholz, but there may be a few damaged cars, amongst which will be Keith Fine, I would think. Spence leads, Abella second, Chiva third, Evans fourth, Scott fifth, then Alan Berg slowing. Ah, and Keith Fine has gone off and hit uh, the German driver, Hager. Keith Fine, who, of course, was involved in that start line accident, an innocent involvement by him, of course. We will see the incident again in slow motion. There it goes. Spence gets away cleanly. Abella does. So does Ross Cheever. Scott a little bit slow away, but then Alan Burr goes for a gap that is just not there. He hits Keith Fine. Paul Jackson jumps over both Berg and also Rob Wilson on the left. Bits of bodywork flying all over the place. And poor old Paul Jackson with the Valor Racing Ralt spins to a halt with everybody but everybody taking avoiding action. The yellow flags being waved here at Zandvoort. The pace car is out, they'll stop the race. It's Spence leading though from Ross Cheever in second place. They've taken the pace car and oh! <laughs> Ross Cheever actually went to the back of Russell Spence's car. I don't think he meant that to happen. Well, whilst the cars are being prepared to come back out on the grid, here is the incident. Berg clipping perhaps the rear wheel of Scott's car as well. We know not what there. But I think Alan Berg, most definitely the man at fault in that incident. Paul Jackson, very, very lucky to get away with it. There's Keith Fines, Cartley back. Hard braking by Keith. And Paul Jackson's number 21, Valor Racing Walk, being carried along on the rear wing of Alan Berg's car. And also in behind that melee there, of course, is Rob Wilson. The front nose cone flying off Paul Jackson's car. And Jackson, who had gone so well in the Silverstone race, finishing in fourth place and second, of course, on the grid, involved there with that incident not of his own making. So the car's being prepared, the track now being cleared. Ross Cheever, who now has the nose cone off Paul Jackson's car after he had that uh, coming together with Russell Spence where he hit Russell Spence up the rear. Three cars not taking the restart will be Paul Jackson, Keith Fine and Alfred Hager. A big disappointment of course for Keith Fine who leads the Class B category. Red lights on, green lights are away, Scott makes a start, so does Russell Spence and they're four abreast as Ross Cheever tries the inside, Carlos Abella's up on the outside, they're going down towards Tarzan corner, an amazing start, incident free, round Tarzan they go, it's Cheever on the inside, Dave Scott on the outside, Spence trying to go up on the inside of Scott as they come out of Tarzan corner, up towards the Hugenholz, it is definitely the Valor Racing Grawl, that are Ross Cheever leading, looking for his second consecutive victory here, after Spa, Championship leader Johnny Dumfries, of course, down at the European Formula 3 race at Nagaro, trying to win both the 
Formula 3 series. First time that could ever be done, but it's Ross Cheever leading, Dave Scott in second place, Russell Spence is in third, Carlos Abella is fourth, and then Alan Berg fifth, Volkert Wiedler sixth. Behind them is Rob Wilson. So it's Ross Cheever leading. Down the long straight towards Tarzan corner, weaving a little bit up towards the barrier as he comes. Cheever it is who leads. Dave Scott in second place. Dave Scott, his return to the Melbourne Formula 3 Championship Series, highlighted by his pole position here at Zanford. And what excellent racing we've had from these Formula 3 cars in 1984. Plenty of excitement with the taped up nose there of our race leader, Ross Cheever. And he's pulling away from Dave Scott. Russell Spence in third place still. And Spence must try and at least get second place in order to increase his championship points tally. He missed the opportunity, of course, of gaining more points at the previous round at Spa when John Dumfries, our championship leader, oh, well, it's only three in the fourth place has gone Alan Berg, fifth Carlos Abella, as I was saying, when our championship leader, John Dumfries, was out of the point scoring position because he only finished in seventh place. And his problem with that race was a, a rather duff engine. Ross Cheever, number six, showing that he's six in the championship. Dave Scott is in second place, and Russell Spence getting ever closer in third. Spence knowing that he has to score maximum points if possible from the remaining four races in the 1984 Former three championship series. Still the leader, Ross Cheever. And going through on the inside is Russell Spence. Oh! And well, Scott ran a little bit wide there. Scott uh, being a little bit careful. Cheever goes through. Scott in second place. Russell Spence looking to the inside, going into Tarzan corner. They're side by side around the corner. And once again, Spence leaving a little bit of a wide line out of Tarzan, up towards the Hugenholz. Nose to tail they come. And it is Spence going through on the inside. They've collided. And Spence takes avoiding action. <laughs> Dave Scott reversing up the track. Through goes Alan Berg. He's gone up to third place. Dave Scott is in fourth. Carlos Abella is in fifth. And Scott will not be pleased. He perhaps left a little bit of an opening coming into that Hugenholz corner, but I don't really think it was sufficient for Russell Spence to go through and a bit of an over-optimistic move by Russell Spence as off goes Rob Wilson. So there is Alan Berg third, Dave Scott fourth, Carlos Abella is in fifth place, Volkart Wiedler is sixth as Rob Wilson's car is towed away. Through goes Ross Cheever onto his last lap, and this would be his second consecutive victory for himself and for Valor Racing. A fine drive by Ross. Into the Hugenholz for the final time. Not only a win, but also fastest lap that will net him 10 more points in the 1984 Marlborough Formula 3 Championship Series. The checkered flag is ready and is waved in front of this enormous crowd here at Zandvoort. Victory for the young American, 20-year-old Ross Cheever. Second place for Russell Spence. Third place is Alan Berg being chased by Dave Scott. But it will be Berg third, Dave Scott fourth, Carlos Abella fifth. Sixth place for Volkirk Wiedler. And there, a delighted Ross Cheever receiving spoils of victory from Pierre Monnier. Russell Spence adding more points to his tally for second place. So both Russell Spence and Ross Cheever were fined, in fact, for this incident of overtaking the pace car, but were left with their results, which stand. Cheever wins from Russell Spence, Berg in third. In the points standing, it's still Dumfries leading. He has 87 points. Russell Spence second with 58. Third, Berg with 53. Fourth, Mario Hyten with 38. Fifth, Carlos Abella with 25. Sixth, Ross Cheever with 24. As we move on to round 15 at Brands Hatch around the Grand Prix circuit on the 23rd of September, just one week after the Zandvoort race. And all Johnny Dumfries has to do, and he's in pole position, 
is to gain one solitary championship point from the remaining three races of the 1984 Marlborough Formula 3 Championship. In order for Russell Spence to win, he has to win every single race. And of course, uh, Tony De Vries must not score any points. So a rather a tall order for him. Up towards Druids, it's Ross Cheever leading. Berg second, Dumfries third, Carlos Abella in fourth place. Now, we've spoken to Dumfries before the race. He is not going to take things easy, he said. If he wins the championship here, he wants to win it in style. He wants to win the race. Ross Cheever, Alan Berg, Joey Dumfries, Carlos Abella, Mario Heighton in fifth, Russell Spence down there in sixth place. So Spence has an awful lot to do with Rob Wilson gets sandwiched between two other cars. It's Ross Cheever, though, still leading from Allen Berg, and what an amazing last couple of races Ross Cheever has had. He's been as dominant in those two races as Joan Dumfries has been in the earlier part of the season. Ross Cheever. Could he be going towards his hat-trick of victories? Not if Allen Berg or Joan Dumfries have got anything to do with it, I wouldn't think. Ross Cheever. The American leader and the Canadian leading the man from Great Britain, who leads the man from Spain, who leads the man from Switzerland. And you don't get any more international than that. In fact, I would say that uh, the Marlborough Formula 3 Championship Series must be the second most international category from the point of view of drivers outside Grand Prix racing. Chiva, this beautiful shot coming up over the rides into Druid's corner. There's Dumfries third. Russell Spence also in there as Ross Cheva goes through, but Alan Berg is closing very slightly. Two seconds gap between first and second. At the moment, it's dry here at Brands Hatch, although we've got dark, threatening clouds. Up towards Druid's corner. Ross Cheva, Alan Berg. They've pulled clear now of this battle for third place, Dumfries, Carlos Abella, Russell Spence has moved up into fifth place, ahead of Mario Heighton, who's six. And in seventh place is Dave Scott. So it's Berg a little bit closer to race leader Ross Cheever. There is Andrew Gilbert Scott leading Brett Riley. The New Zealander having a welcome return to Formula 3 racing here. There is Carlos Abella in fourth place behind Dumfries. Remember, all Dumfries has to do is get one solitary championship point from this race or the next two races, something which I know he's quite capable of doing. And Alan Berg most definitely now much nearer Ross Cheever. Battle for third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh place. Five cars tied to that battle and not far behind them is Paul Jackson. Alan Berg going through number three. At the moment, third in the championship. Of course, uh, even if Dumfries wins the Marlborough Formula 3 Championship Series here, there's still a big battle going on for second, third, and fourth place in the championship. The incentive to win the Marlborough Formula 3 Series very high indeed, because, of course, they get a full Formula 1 test drive with the McLaren Marlborough Formula 1 Championship team, who, of course, have finished first and second in the 1984 World Drivers' Championship and, of course, have won the Constructors' Championship. So what better team to have a test in than the Marlborough McLaren team? Ross Cheever leads. Ross Cheever, incidentally, the brother of Grand Prix driver Eddie Cheever, who in 1984 races for the Alfa Romeo team. Previous to that, raced for the Renault Formula One team. So racing obviously running in the family and the Chiva team. And Ross Chiva, perhaps going to emulate his uh, brother, who was a very successful Formula 3 driver prior to going into Formula 2 and Formula 1. So it's still Dumfries third, Abella fourth, but Russell Spence now much closer to Carlos Abella. Oh, and looking to the inside, coming into Druids. Six for Mario Heighton, seventh for Dave Scott, and eighth for Paul Jackson. Through goes the race leader who's been well through. Here he comes, Ross Cheever, heading towards his third victory here at Brands Hatch on the 2.61 mile Grand Prix circuit. 
at the moment it is Russell Spence who's gained fastest lap in a time of 1 minute 24.75 seconds an average speed of just over 111 miles per hour still this battle continuing for third fourth fifth sixth seventh and eighth places with Paul Jackson now closing up on Dave Scott and it's Alan Berg now a lot closer Alan Berg in second place closing up sliding a little bit of oversteer going through there no more than half a second between first and second Ross Cheever really does have a fight on his hand here at Brands Hatch drivers really liking uh, the Brands Hatch circuit this is the one time of the year when they come and compete here Carlos Abello with Russell Spence right behind him through goes Mario Hayton with Dave Scott right behind him leader Ross Cheever through once again Dumfries is in third place Berg of course in second place and Carlos Abello is off Carlos Abello is off at Clearways corner he had an altercation with Russell Spence. I think Spence went for a non-existent gap there. And through goes Dave Scott past Mario Hyten, who fights back round the outside. So a change in the top four positions as Alan Berg remorselessly closes on our leader, Ross Cheever. It's Cheever leading. Berg now closer than ever in second place. Dumfries is in third. Spence in fourth, closing on Dumfries in third place. Right behind Russell Spence is uh, Dave Scott. And first and second just could not be closer. Out of Druid's corner they go. And Spence now right up with Dumfries. Spence is back with Dumfries as they come and lap some tail enders. And that's Gary Evans who's gone off also into the bank at Clearways. Where Clearways coming a bit of a, a graveyard as first and second are very close together and it's spotty with rain. It's starting to spot with rain. Remember, all of the drivers are on the dry, slick tyres. No grooves on those tyres, and it's getting darker and darker all the time, but we're getting towards the end of the race. And you can see just a little bit of spray from the back end of Chiva's car as he bottoms at Paddock Bend. He'll have to go up round these two, and uh, he's going past two tail enders. He's gone past one, and this could be a chance for Alan Berg to go up on the inside. Down, bottom straight they come. It's third and fourth, also incredibly close together, the two main championship contenders. Ross Cheva leads, pulling away now once again just that little bit from Alan Berg. But it's still anybody's race for third place. Into the last two laps of the race, it's Ross Cheva leading. Alan Berg in with a real chance of victory. This would be his first Formula 3 victory since uh, June of 1983. But all eyes on this battle for third and fourth place. Through goes Dumfries. He knows all he has to do is to pick up one championship point to be the 1984 Marlborough Formula 3 champion. There is first and second out of Druid's corner. It's Ross Cheever putting just that little bit of daylight between himself and Alan Berg. And they're on their penultimate lap. Third and fourth. All eyes on this battle, which I really think is going to go right down to the wire. They start their last lap. The leaders have already gone through. It's still Ross Cheever leading from Alan Berg. Third is Dumfries. In fourth place is Russell Spence. They're about to come up and lap some tail enders. And this should be interesting because this could be where Russell Spence goes through. But he's got to be careful not to collect anybody. And it's going to be a very tight fit indeed. Spence trying for the outside. He'll switch. Oh, almost hitting the rear end of Dumfries' car. And they go both sides of that tail ender. And Spence looking to the inside. Oh, they almost came together there as our leader comes up towards the chequered flag with Berg right behind him. Up towards the chequered flag comes the 20-year-old American Ross Cheever with a Valo Racing Rolt to score his third victory on the trot. But who will it be in third place? Russell Spence has pushed off Joey Dumfries. Dumfries hits the barrier very hard here at Clearways Corner. Spence rudely punting off the new 1984 Marlborough Formula 3 champion. Joy Dumfries, he may not have finished the race, but he's won the championship. Well, that is incredible. We see it again in slow motion replay. No doubt about it, Russell Spence much too close behind uh, Joy Dumfries. And Spence almost taking himself out because you can see here Dumfries running back across the 
track towards the tire wall. Spence has to brake very hard and just look at the impact on the Dave Price run. Rort bang into the tires. Goes poor old Johnny Dumfries. Totally innocent there, but a, a delighted Ross Cheever. Alan Berg finishes in second place, and Russell Spence is disqualified from third place due to his altercation with both Carlos Abella and Johnny Dumfries. So Dave Scott finishes third, Heighton fourth, Paul Jackson in fifth place, David Hunt sixth. Dumfries, the championship winner with 87 points. Up to second place now comes Alan Berg with 60. Third place for Russell Spence with 58. Fourth is Mario Heighton with 41 points. And fifth now, Ross Cheever with 33. As we move on to round 16, the penultimate round of the 1984 Marlborough Formula 3 Championship. And the man in pole position is our champion, Johnny Dumfries who goes around the time of 1 minute 13.04 seconds in practice, an incredible time, almost half a second quicker than the lap record that has been held for so long by Dave Scott. In second place on the grid will be Alan Berg, third will be Dave Scott, fourth Ross Cheever, fifth Mario Heighton, sixth a rather subdued, we hope, Russell Spence. Still Spence obviously providing plenty of spectacle in the 1984 Marlboro Formula 3 Championship and I think the last few races have provided us with some superb racing. Away goes this packed 22 car field out towards Allard's corner for the first time. And Dumfries must have made one heck of a start because he's well in the lead. Chiba second, Heighton third, Scott fourth, Russell Spence fifth, in sixth place is Carlos Abella, although Dave Hunt was looking for a way around that with his Acorn Computers sponsored car. Heighton there third, Dave Scott in fourth, Russell Spence fifth. Mario Heighton obviously wanted to finish in the top three in the championship. Oh, and uh, Carlos Abella taking to the dirt there as through comes Johnny Dumfries. Well clear in the lead. Through goes Paul Jackson. There's Dave Hunt, Paul Jackson, Carlos Abella, and almost everybody else in the uh, field, as Ross Cheever is still in second place. There is Ross Cheever second. Ross, who of course has won the previous three Formula 3 races, Dumfries leading, confirming why he is champion. If you're wondering where Alan Berg is, he's spun on the opening laps of the race, and at the moment is out of the top six positions. If Johnny Dumfries can win this race here at Fruxton, that will be nine of the 16 races so far this year that he has won. Quite a record. And Spence tailing Dave Scott as the leader comes through. Dumfries. Ross Cheever consolidating second place. Heighton third, Dave Scott fourth, Russell Spence fifth. Dave Scott with a bent front nose wing in that fourth place. And Mario Heighton with some extra sponsorship on the side of his car in order that he can compete competitively in the Marlboro Formula 3 Championship Series. Mario Heighton, of course, running in one of the Murray Taylor racing worlds. Dumfries well in the lead and also now with fastest lap to his credit time. One minute, 13.75 seconds, a speed of 115 miles per hour. Russell Spence in fifth place, most certainly in a subdued manner here, dropping back a little bit in fifth place. Alan Berg is now up to sixth. As through comes Dumfries once again. Ross Cheever. Almost losing it uh, all by himself. Mario Heighton now also having a rather lonely race. There doesn't really seem to be anybody who can stop Dumfries today. So Joey Dumfries going on towards his ninth victory and a man most definitely destined for higher things. Dumfries, the Marlboro Formula 3 champion of 1984, most definitely the find of the year, and perhaps the second find of the year has been Ross Cheever, but the 1984 Marlboro series has most certainly 
been a bumpy year for new drivers, good drivers. We've got Carlos Abella, who we see here, Mario Heighton, who has also made inroads, as has uh, David Hunt. Alan Berg's also gone consistently well. But if there were two men who really do stand out, it would be Johnny Dumfries and Ross Cheever. Russell Spence, of course, has also shown an excellent turn of speed, but uh, I think he has to temper his driving technique perhaps a little bit. Ross Chiva had the same problem earlier on perhaps in the year, especially at Alton Park, where he was just that little bit wild. Uh, but uh, he's also tempered his driving and he's had three wins to his credit and of course a second place here at Thruxton. So the car's now on their final lap. There's third place man Mario Heighton with Dave Scott closing up just that little bit at the time. But no problem for our race leader, Joy Dumfries, who comes up to lap a car. Round the outside he goes. Through the Thruxton chicane, up towards the chequered flag, and victory for the Dave Price Racing Entered Car. Second place for Ross Cheever. Third place for Mario Heighton. Fourth will be Dave Scott. Fifth, Russell Spence. And sixth for Alan Berg. So Dumfries obviously delighted. And there, Dave Price, the man responsible for the superb preparation of that car. Spoils of victory. Ross Cheever on the right, uh, Mario Heighton on the left. An Englishman, an American, and a Swiss. So the final round, of course, at Silverstone. There are the confirmed results at Thruxton, the 30th of September, round 16. Just one more race to go. Dumfries is the champion, 97 points. Berg second with 61. Spence third with 60. Heighton fourth with 45. Fifth, Cheever with 39. Sixth, Carlos Abella with 25 points. So the battle on for second and third place in the championship and fourth and fifth. So it is once again Dumfries in pole position. Alan Berg is second quickest. Gilbert Scott third. Dave Scott fourth. Gary Evans fifth, Carlos Abella sixth, Russell Spence seventh, Mario Heighton eighth, Ross Cheever ninth, and Paul Jackson tenth as they head away towards Cott's corner. And it looks as if Berg has got the initiative. And the middle of the field has been a coming together between David Hunt and Mario Heighton. So Heighton, who's in fourth place in the championship, could be overhauled, of course, by Ross Cheever as out gets Dave Hunt. The car embroiled in the catch fencing. And there is Dumfries, who's taken the lead. Dumfries leading from Alan Berg. It's Andrew Gilbert Scott in third place as the field comes storming through Beckett's corner. And out at Stowe Corner, there's been an accident. Ross Cheever is out while Dumfries leads. Burr second, Gilbert Scott third, Dave Scott fourth. Carlos Abella, who was involved in the incident with Ross Cheever. Cheever trapped in the catch fencing down at Stowe Corner. They may well stop this race. Through comes Mario Heighton who was also involved in a first lap incident with David Hunt. His car, of course, David Hunt's car, in the catch fencing as the field goes through. An enormous field this, there were 28 cars that started the race as Dumfries comes through. Berg second, Gilbert Scott third, the hand up from Dave Scott in fourth place. The red flags are out. So they have stopped the race in order to get Ross Chiva away from his damaged car. Ross Cheever being taken to the Northampton General Hospital for observation. He seems to be okay, but all of the cars now stopping. The red flag's out. At the restart, 15 laps now. Dumfries in pole, Alan Berg in second place. Andrew Gilbert Scott, then Dave Scott, then Carlos Abella. And as we said at the start of the first part of the race, we had 28 cars here for the final round of the 1984 Marlborough Formula 3 Championship. Everybody getting quite safely through Cops Corner for the first time. And incidentally, that is the biggest Formula 3 field since Silverstone Grand Prix meeting of 1981. Prospects for the 1985 Marlborough Formula 3 Championship Series even better with no European Formula 3 Series. In 1985, the British Series, which is regarded as the most important of all the different national Formula 3 Championship Series, and there's a Formula 3 Championship Series not only held in Great Britain, but also in Germany, Italy and France. And spectators coming from all over, including the famous Silverstone Hare, that gets across the track before our race leader, Johnny Dumfries, comes through. If Johnny can win this race, it will be literally 10 out of 10. An incredible performance by our Marlborough Formula 3 champion.
So it's Dumfries leading from Allenberg in second place. Midfield battle as ever. Everybody racing all the way down the field. Dumfries it is who leads. Berg is in second place and Andrew Gilbert's got very close behind him in third place. Dave Scott is in fourth. Dumfries leads. Alan Berg now under close scrutiny from Andrew Gilbert. Scott is in third place. Gilbert Scott taking a look down the inside. Incidentally, Andrew Gilbert Scott's drive here. He's in third place, supported as ever by the Racing for Britain concern. A very worthwhile concern indeed that helps young, aspiring, up and coming drivers. Dumfries, it is who leads. Berg second, Gilbert Scott third, Dave Scott in fourth place, Carlos Abella fifth, and Russell Spence in sixth. So at the moment, Alan Berg most definitely holding the upper hand. Incidentally, Mario Hyten has come up well through the field. There is Mario, who has benefited from the uh, restart. He's, of course, he was way down the bottom end of the field, and he's trying very hard indeed as well. His fourth position in the championship, quite secure, because Ross Cheever not taking part in the second part of the race, and other drivers who failed to take the restart with David Hunt, Jeffrey Hall. Berg now under a lot of pressure from Gilbert Scott. And it's Russell Spence who's gained fast this lap. So that extra point to Russell Spence, but Spence will have to finish ahead of second place man Alan Berg in order to take second place in the championship. Had he, of course, not been disqualified from the race at Brands Hatch, he would have been second in the championship. But uh, the stewards feeling that uh, his driving was somewhat uh, wild there, excluding him from the results. Not only the stewards thinking it, but also uh, certain cameramen who filmed this program. Second and third. Still a battle royal, but about four seconds behind our race leader. There he is, Joey Dumfries. Alan Berg second, Gilbert Scott third, Dave Scott in fourth place. As ever, of course, the Rort car manufacturing concern completely and utterly dominating Formula 3 racing in 1984. Still Dumfries leading. Berg in second place, and Russell Spence looking for a way past Dave Scott, perhaps. Carlos Abella now right behind Russell Spence. Abella, the young Spanish driver who's been getting better and better with every race. Consistent drives from the Spaniard. He's in sixth place in the championship. And now Russell Spence, oh, almost a coming together between Spence and Dave Scott. And Russell Spence takes fourth place. Leader is still this man, Joey Dumfries, heading towards his 10th victory of the 1984 Marlborough Formula 3 Championship Series. A dominant victory for him and a dominant championship. And really in the last three Marlborough Formula 3 Championship years, in 1982, Palmer was equally dominant when he won the championship. In 1983, Ayrton Senna was also equally dominant when he won the championship. And in 1984, Dumfries is without a doubt the dominant force in the Marlboro Formula 3 series. So most certainly higher and better things for Johnny Dumfries in the years to come as we watch the battle for second, third and fourth. And Russell Spence knowing perfectly well that he has got to take that second position of that man, the Canadian Alan Berg. And this really is the battle. Through goes Rob Wilson. He goes past Paul Jackson. I think we should also add that a worthy Class B champion is Keith Fine, who wins the Class B championship with 95 points from Carlton Tingling, who has 67 in third place. Just one point behind will be Steve Bradley with 66. Class B is also providing very close and competitive racing, and we've seen how Russell Spence closing right up on Andrew Gilbert Scott. Gilbert Scott, who of course won the 1983 Formula Ford Festival, 
hasn't had the necessary finances to complete a full year in the Marlborough Formula 3 Series. We hope to see him back in 1985, but he's certainly having a fine race here in this final round of the series. And it is still Berg, Gilbert Scott, Russell Spence, second, third and fourth, nose to tail for those three cars. Gilbert Scott in third place, the cushion for Alan Berg perhaps, Alan will be quite happy to have him in that position. This battle now onto their last lap, Dumfries has already gone through, so Dumfries will be 10 out of 10 for him, it's better than a school report for Joey Dumfries and the Dave Price Racing Rort, sponsored by BP, takes victory here, 10th victory and consolidates his championship lead. And finishing in second place will be Alan Berg, who will therefore finish second in the championship. Andrew Gilbert Scott finishes third here at Silverstone, fourth for Russell Spence, fifth for Dave Scott, and sixth for Carlos Abella. Well, the final championship positions, therefore, Joey Dumfries has 106 points. In second place will be Alan Berg with 67, third for Russell Spence with 64, fourth Mario Hayton with 45, Fifth, Ross Cheever with 39, and in sixth place, Carlos Abella with 26. So ends the 1984 Marlborough Formula 3 Championship Series here at Silverstone in October. But what of 1985? Well, as you probably know, the demise of the European Formula 3 Championship Series should add weight to the national championships. And indeed, the British Formula 3 Series is known as the most competitive and therefore the best. So 1985 looks very strong indeed. Our second report tonight on Sky Channel's International Motorsport comes from the now inside Roger Clark. Roger driving on the left, Ian Grindrod the co-driver on the right, and Ian Grindrod speaking. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All easy. It's fast left at junction. Hairpin right at junction. Hairpin right. Long fast right at junction. May tighten a bit. Easy left. Hairpin left at junction, funny arrows. been left. That's it. Very narrow, very muddy. Because hair been left at the end. Easy right, square right at junction. Ninety left. It's flat out over three brows. Absolutely flat, all the way to the arrows at the top. Keep it going. Ninety right at the top. 100 yards yet. Easy left at junction. All very fast stuff. All easy, all easy. Just easy stuff all the way.
Up at the junction goes 90 right, then left. 90 right, immediate left. Left. All flat out now. All flat stuff. All flat. Keep it going. Okay, yeah. 100 yards to the finish. Keep it going. That's it. Remember those three brows on that straight? <laughs> through a gate. Square left at junction onto gravel. Square right through a water from the splash. Right. Square left through a gate. It's all long easy left now. All long easy left all the way to the hairpin. Left, hairpin right. Long, easy right. It goes long, fast left, keeps going, keeps going. at junction, narrow gate. left. So we've got a bump over a railway line. It's a bump on a railway line. Then square left through a gate. And square right. And square left. Square right. Fast left. Okay, that's it. That was muddy. It's less than thirty. Five. Left. Junction left. Narrow bridge. 
bridge. So square right and square left. logs. Goes left into T right. Junction right, easy. left. Oh, looks okay. Long, easy ride. Bends a fast left.
going left. Say it straight on. Right. Left at the end. Left. It's right. Watch for a right. Over a bridge. to go. in the end, I think.
right. Hundred yards. Well, that's it from Sky Channel's International Motorsports program for this evening. We've hoped you've enjoyed our ride with Roger Clark and Ian Grindrod. See you next week. <laughs>